eating a dead porcupine. Oh. Okay. Loosen up. 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 Jurassic World is a silly movie. In case you don't know what Jurassic World is, it is a movie about a dinosaur theme park. It is not unlike Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park 2, Lost World, Jurassic Park 3, all the dinosaurs are out again, Jurassic Park 4, no, oh my goodness, what are the dinosaurs doing now? It's basically the same premise. The dinosaurs get out and it's terrible and, and people die. There's one thing about Jurassic World that bugs the crap out of me. No, that's not true. There's a lot of things about Jurassic World that bug the crap out of me. I wanna go over one today, just one. It's not that much. The Indominus Rex incident. The whole premise of the movie is the fault of Masrani Corporation. Not Simon Masrani, not Claire, not even the security guard who's the one who ultimately lets him out. It's none of their faults. Not ultimately. The fact is, Masrani Corporation, its board, its executives, anybody who's doing documentation or putting together protocol, they're at fault. They messed up. It is very clear that the ideal that Simon Mizrani has about Jurassic Park is completely different from what their actions are. There's a part in the movie where Simon Mizrani is flying Claire around in a helicopter. He explains to her that he has no interest in money, he has no interest in profits, he seems to get bored when she's talking about customer approval ratings, and when she says she can't judge a dinosaur's well-being, he somehow decides that he can do it by looking them in the eye. You can see in their eyes, right? Of course. Well, then you go do it, you jack wagon. If you can do it so well, just do it. He worries that Claire is too tense. And he tells her about... What's his name? What's the guy's name? Hammond? Oh, Hammond. Yeah. I think it's Hammond. He tells her about Hammond that not once did he mention profit. Spare no expense. He then goes on to say, Don't forget. Forget. and this is important for the rest of this whole explanation. Fire Don't that. forget why we built this place, Claire. Jurassic World exists to remind us how very small we are, how new. You can't put a price on that. And in fact, Owen, later in the movie, mirrors this sentiment. He says, He just wants to teach people some humility. He doesn't make weapons, but that's not part of it. However, when Claire has the meeting with Verizon, it's very clear that these are not the principles that they're going by. First of all, she says the phrase, Global news coverage, celebrity visitors, eyes of the world. Eyes of the world. They want more exposure, which means they want more people to come to the island, which means more money. Hoskins at one point points out that we end up in places like this, charge seven bucks a soda. She then goes on to say, but consumers want them bigger, louder, more teeth. They want cool dinosaurs because they want more people to come see their stuff. They, should want, they want more money. And finally, as if that wasn't proof enough, she's wooing Verizon to sponsor the Indominus Rex. All part. They want their money. That even though Simon Mizrani does not care about profits, Mizrani Corporation does. The park is there for money. It's there to make money. So why is that important? Well, because if you're focused so hard on money, then you kind of sometimes cut corners. Uh, you don't pay attention to things, tiny things, like documenting your protocol. And, mm, this is, mm, this is the crux of all of it. Masrani Corporation is clearly, clearly unprepared for what the Indominus Rex ends up being. They're still building the enclosure when the dinosaur is fully grown. Which, yes, they explain it as, oh, they didn't expect it to be so big. Okay, fine. In separate parts of the movie, Claire, Simon Masrani, and Dr. Wu. Three people who probably should have the most amount of knowledge about this dinosaur, they don't know what it's capable of. Simon Mizrani asks Claire to consult with Owen on the Indominus Rex. Why? 
Why did, why? Owen is a velociraptor trainer. In theory, he's an animal trainer of some kind, but specifically for the case of this movie, he is a velociraptor trainer. Velociraptors are different, at least as far as they know at this point, than the Indominus Rex. The skills don't transfer. He can't offer really solid, specific advice about the Indominus Rex because he doesn't know anything about the Indominus Rex. It's sort of like hiring a bike mechanic to look at an 18-wheeler. Yeah, okay, they, all, they both have wheels, they both have gears, they both have engines, but at the end of the day, it's two completely different vehicles. Fine, they are unprepared. They don't realize how big the Indominus Rex is gonna be. They don't realize it's gonna be camouflage or whatever, blah, 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 blah. Let's say that that's all true and they don't understand. It is true, the dinosaur is full grown. They've had some time to observe its behavior and how it acts. I'm not saying they needed to kill the Indominus Rex. They shouldn't have done that, but they should have done something different they needed to change course. They needed to course correct once they realized how utterly unprepared they were. But hey, you know what? They were unprepared. They didn't know how to proceed. I don't know why they forged onward anyway, but they did. When the incident starts, so in the beginning of this whole movie, Claire and Owen are going to the pen and the dinosaur is missing. At exactly that moment, Claire is in charge. Claire needs to run things. She should not leave because she is the senior officer in the area. She needs to tell everybody what to do. She should call the control room, but she doesn't. She doesn't even try. And we'll talk about infrastructure in a second, but she leaves. Bad mistake. At the point that Claire leaves, the security guard is in charge. The security guard should not have ever let Owen into the enclosure. He does not know Owen. He does not know what he's capable of. Okay, maybe he does know Owen. Maybe he does know what he's capable of. But he doesn't know what Owen is going to do in this exact situation. He should not let him in. The fault does not fall in this situation on Claire or the security guard. They should have known better. But they would have known better if they had had documented protocol. And if they had gone through training, and if they knew that they weren't supposed to do these things that they did. There's another point in the movie. Claire is in the control room, as is Simon Mizrani, and stuff's going down. There is clearly a documented protocol in this situation, because Vivian, the, uh, I don't know what her job title is, but she's one of the people in the control room, tries to contact park officials to tell them Hey, there's a dinosaur coming. Mazrani shuts her down. This is Control, put out a park wide oh, alert. Hand them the damn phone, please. Sorry, I'm getting new information. This is stupid. He should not have done that for three solid reasons. Number one, by not communicating with other park officials, with other park departments, there's no way for them to prepare for the worst. They cannot enact their own protocols. Number two, somebody spent a lot of time and a lot of thought, in theory, preparing a security protocol when such a thing happens. Mizrani undermines it and destroys any sense of security that this protocol might have enacted. Number three, and I kind of hinted at it just now, Simon Mizrani does not know better than the chief security officer, or whatever the person's title is. Their entire job is to deal with the security of the park. Simon Mizrani does not know enough about the security system in the park to actually override it. It's at this point in time that Claire speaks up and it becomes glaringly obvious what the whole point of this thing is. Evacuate the island. We'd never reopen. They want to keep the park open so they can make more money. And Mizrani doesn't back down from that. He doesn't correct her. Also, there's not really a protocol for evacuation. Best, as best I can tell. Guests are herded into the pedestrian area of the park, good idea, but they stay there overnight. Wouldn't it be smart to find some way to make evacuation off of an island full of dinosaurs 
a little bit quicker than that? Clearly they have dangerous animals. Clearly containment can fail. It happens a number of times. Even during the movie they comment that their invisible fence fails. Security said the invisible fences were a no fail. That is the second time this month. Given the possibility for catastrophe, Jurassic World should have a quicker evacuation plan. Clearly they could afford it. Have you seen the park? It is very nice. They could afford it. They're doing just fine for themselves. Let's talk about infrastructure for a second. And I'm gonna pick on something really minor first. Because it bugs me and I don't know if it necessarily shows a bigger picture, but they don't use a card reader to get into the control room. They just have a guy standing at the door. You don't know what card readers are? Owen just barges in. He has no ID whatsoever. He just barges in. Security risk. Hoskins barges in. Granted, he has ID. He shows ID. He barges in twice. And in none of these situations does the guard actually do anything about it. So not only do you not have a card reader, which would be far more secure than an individual standing at the door, but the individual you have standing at the door isn't actually doing anything about the people who are barging in. Additionally, there does not seem to be an effective communication system from the IREX pen, which is a great thing to call it, to the control room, which is, seems like an oversight. Now, I touched on this earlier, but Claire doesn't even think to call the control room. And this seems the way that I worded it, that it, that's a failure on her part. But if you think about it, the security guard's there, Owen's there, Claire is there. None of the three of them thought to just call? There are only two explanations for that that I can think of. Number one, none of them know what a phone is, which how did, why did you, how did you get all three of the people who don't know what a phone is into a room at the same time? The other possible explanation, and the far more likely one in my opinion, is that all three of them know that there's no way to get a hold of them. They know there's no landline, they know there's no radio, they know there's no cell phone reception. They are aware of the situation, they know the connection will be impossible, so they just, they don't bother. They just don't bother. Now it seems to me, if you have an asset as dangerous as the Indominus Rex, as dangerous as you suspect the Indominus Rex is going to be, don't you think that you should have some way to get a hold of somebody to deal with it? More importantly, don't you think it's important that you have a fail-safe way, like a landline? This would not be difficult for them to install. They have landlines already. If you watch the evacuation when it first starts, the person running the ride who, uh, the ride that Zach and Clay are on, Zach and Gray, he, he gets a phone call on a, on a, on a, you know, one of these things. And with the wire coming out of the bottom, it's a landline. Probably, very likely. Just install that same thing over in the IREX pet. And while we're on the subject of that particular staff member, there are a few instances where we see the staff of Jurassic World have not really been trained very well. The person who's running that ride that Zack and Gray get into, the big hamster ball thing, he gets a phone call, he goes, oh my God, we gotta do this. And then he pulls out a manual, which means he doesn't, he doesn't know what to do in that situation. He should know. He should know that evacuation, what that means, where they need to go, how he deals with the crowd. He should know that. And if he doesn't know that, he should, be able to get a hold of that information quickly, not have to look it up in a 200 page manual. And while we're on the subject of evacuation, don't you think they should have some sort of heightened security measures installed around the pedestrian area? If your protocol is to send everybody to the pedestrian area, the mall and food court and all that stuff, it should be harder for dinosaurs to get into that area is what I'm saying. Because you don't want dinosaurs in that area because there's a bunch of people and they're gonna die really quickly because it's all concentrated, which is what happens. Which leads me to believe that they didn't have the security protocol that I'm talking about. The security measures, whatever you wanna call it. I'm using the word protocol a lot. I'm sorry, I don't have a better word. The bigger ineffectiveness is the ACU. When the ACU go in to confront the IREX, they're woefully unprepared. That's clear because they get decimated. Yes, they probably could have done a better job if they knew what the IREX was capable of. However, I think this is more about 
an issue with not being trained well enough. The Irex is not the only animal that could cause this level of decimation, or at least cause a level of decimation that would require everybody be evacuated from the island. Tyrannosaurus rex could do the same thing if it got out. Velociraptors could do the same thing if they got out. In fact, this happened in Jurassic Park. It happened. It happened already. So they should be trained to engage with dinosaurs, not just in a non-lethal way. They should be trained to lethally engage a dinosaur, which in theory they are because Owen comments on it when he's in the control room. Asset containment can use live ammunition in an emergency situation. You have an M134 in your armory. Put it on a chopper and smoke this thing. Apparently, Simon Masrani, the chief executive officer, is the only one who has the ability to approve such an action, which is just a terrible, terrible idea. Again, he is not equipped with the information appropriate to actually make that call. And also, he's not on the ground, most likely. I'll turn that back on. He is not equipped because he's not on the ground. He doesn't know what's happening. The ACU should be able to make the decision to go from non-lethal to lethal in the moment. They can't meet about it. They can't consult with uh, someone who's not even there. They can't make the decision 15 days later. They have to make it in the moment when they're there standing in front of a giant dinosaur who suddenly has camouflage. They should be able to make that decision. And by the way, what is with not having any backup for ACU? There's like, what, eight, 10 guys? If they all get taken out, which they do, then what do you do? You'd shrug your shoulders because that's basically what they did. It was a good thing that the corporate military showed up. It's unclear what Inagen is. At least I don't remember what Inagen is. I think they were in the past movies. I would like to point out one final thing. The biggest thing, maybe, it's that the design of the Indominus Rex is not really overseen by anybody. There's not really any communication about the Indominus Rex. And we know this, and we know this based on the confrontation between Masrani and Dr. Wu. As best we can tell, the entirety of the communication about this asset was done via one memo. One single memo. There were no meetings. There was no consultation. There were no discussions. There was no back and forth. There were no blueprints. There was no team committee trying to make decisions about what they should use and what kind of gaps they should fill and whatever. They, none of that. There was none of that, apparently. There was just, Masrani said it, so Dr. Wu just did it. Wu Wong seems to understand that the way that they deal with gaps in the DNA is problematic. They're going to wind up with undesired traits. But then why didn't he say anything to Masrani? Why didn't he question why didn't he question the team that was working on this dinosaur? Masrani apparently had no understanding of what the Irex was capable of, what was in the dinosaur, or any of that. But maybe he should have. He couldn't, because he was too busy or whatever. Somebody should have. There is always oversight. It's simple corporate culture. If something is being built, there's not just one person building it. There is oversight. There are other people because Dr. Wu has a very specific set of values and he will follow those values when he's building this asset. But his values do not clearly align with those of the board or of Masrani or of other people who run the park. The difference between the incident at Jurassic Park versus the incident at Jurassic World is one of scale. Jurassic Park, the entire security system, was brought down by a single person. Now granted, that was a failure on Hammond's part. He put the entirety of the security system on basically two people, and one of them had most of the knowledge about this system. But it was one mistake. Or maybe a set of three or four mistakes. Jurassic World was a grand failure based on a series of really big mistakes. And I'm not just talking about, oh, how do we run a dinosaur park? That's really hard kind of mistakes. I'm talking about simple corporate structure kind of mistakes, like documenting your protocol and having everybody trained in how you do it and having a backup to the backup to the backup to the backup. You always have backups. That's how you do it. That's corporate culture. Jurassic World, in my mind, is a demonstration 
what can happen when a corporation, a company, doesn't know their shit. And really, if you're a multi-million or multi-billion dollar company, as we are to assume the Maserati Corporation is, you should know better. You should know better. By the way, this also demonstrates that if you see a problem, you work for a company, you see a problem in the corporate structure or a problem just in general, you should speak up. You should tell somebody. Companies can't fix problems that they don't see. And if they don't do anything about it, at least it's not your fault that the CEO has a dinosaur eating his face. Just saying. Well, how did you get two different kinds of dinosaurs to, you know, you know, you know, when, you know, it's Jurassic World, we have dinosaurs, and we promise they won't get out. Whoopsie, they got out, now the dinosaurs, they are eating all of the dumb guests.